Hi guys, I'm Samara Rivers, founder of Black Bourbon Society, and we are here for another cocktail masterclass with Toki Sears. Hey Toki. Hi. How's your day going? Good day. So far, so good. Doing pretty good. Excellent. So today's lesson is all about the Brown Derby. So tell us what it is and how do we make this? <laughs> so Brown Derbies um, are probably one of, probably definitely my favorite shaken uh, bourbon cocktail. Um, I think it's a great brunch cocktail, and it has a lot of fun history behind it as well. Okay, you know, so Brown Derbies are my partner's favorite, so I can't wait to learn how to do this because I always mess up the honey part. Yeah. So, tell me everything. The key is not too much honey. So first, I'm going to talk about the history of the Brown Derby. Um, it actually um, seems to uh, originate from a cocktail called a uh, du rigueur, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Du rigueur. We'll make du it. Rigueur. Uh -huh. um, the du rigueur was um, first in print in 1927. Um, it was in a book called Here's How. And mm -hmm. this particular cocktail asked for scotch whiskey, honey, and grapefruit juice. And then about three years later, um, have you ever heard of Harry, Harry Craddock, uh, Savoy no. cocktail book? No, I have not. Now, he was one of the famous bartenders that actually uh, left the United States during Prohibition because he was a bartender and he didn't have any work. He, you know, so he went to London and he started working at the, the Savoy. Um, so the Savoy cocktail uh, book is one of the books that he published around 1930 and it's uh, all different kind of recipes in his book but the du rigueur is in this book as well um, but this recipe only calls for whiskey grapefruit and honey oh. and then some somehow some way I believe that this recipe jumped upon and came back to the states right right, right. so we know it as a brown derby um, we know this is a Brown Derby. Um, I know you're you're from Los Angeles and you're familiar with the Brown Derby restaurant. Um, I believe it was a chain of like three restaurants, but the original one was was uh, a Brown Derby. It looked like a hat. Yeah. Brown Derby. Um, so there's there's rumors that either a bartender at the Brown Derby restaurant incorporated bourbon because bourbon is the quintessential American whiskey into this recipe. Um, and there's also rumors that there was actually a bartender at a nearby club called the Vendome Club that created this in honor of the restaurant as well. Um, unfortunately, the Brown Derby restaurant, I believe the last one was sold in like 2012, but it seemed like it was an iconic restaurant in LA. Um, during the golden era of Hollywood or the beginning of that era of Hollywood. And a lot of people really love this drink. And it's, it's really interesting how honey can kind of um, uh, fuse flavors together. And, and, and bourbon can be kind of tricky sometimes because of those caramel, those vanilla notes. It's right. sometimes hard for that whiskey to stand out in shaking cocktails. Um, but this one is just, the merge of the grapefruit, the nice tart, refreshing bitterness of grapefruit juice with the honey syrup. Fantastic. This is a great cocktail, easy sipping cocktail for bourbon drinkers, and it's really easy to make. You only need three ingredients. And, and you can make it. They are. You need your bourbon, of course. So okay. we're going to be featuring, of course, Four Roses. We're going to go with the Four Roses uh, small batch. For this particular cocktail and then um, you need fresh grapefruit juice I got some really nice um, cold pressed fra uh, grapefruit juice here because I'm at home you know how that goes yes and I squeeze some so one grapefruit was able to get me this much grapefruit. and that's a great amount that's a great amount you could probably make a good about four or five drinks out of that and you and just need honey. <laughs> and you just need honey. And uh, to make a honey syrup, um, my recipe for honey syrup is two to one. Honey to, to warm water or hot water. It's really easy. 
I do two shots of honey, one shot of water, stir it until it's uh, until it's all incorporated, all emulsified, and you're good to go. Um, do not try to make this drink without making a honey syrup. If you just put regular honey in the shaker tin, um, because of the temperature and because of the viscosity of honey, it's it's gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna incorporate into the drink. It's now, almost gonna caramelize itself and kind of get stuck on the bottom. Now I've learned that lesson the hard way. I've tried to make brown derbies for my partner plenty of times and did not want to make honey syrup. And for some reason, I was super intimidated by making honey syrup until you just told me how. Um, but I tried to just squeeze honey in there like, oh, it'll shake up, it'll break up. And literally, it's a wad of honey stuck at the bottom of the tin, hard to get out and clean because with all the ice, it actually freezes it in place. So, totally. just, yeah. So, what I did following your lead, I put a shot of water in this and microwaved it for a minute and then two shots of honey to this and just stir it up until it starts to lose enough in the salt. And so, I mean, now I've got. I mean, so super simple, less than a minute to make. So I feel easy. good already. Yeah, it's super easy. So just like any other great cocktail, it's all about balance, right? We don't want too much grapefruit juice because it's going to be too, well, I love grapefruit juice, but it'll be too bitter. I love bitter. Anyway, but too much honey is definitely going to make it too sweet. Okay. Right? So we're going to go for a, um, um, our ratio is going to be half, honey to one part grapefruit juice. So we can get started now if you'd like. Okay, yes. So last episode you told us cheap ingredients first. Right, so we're gonna so, do, um, honey's expensive. Let's go with our grapefruit juice first. Okay, so how much? One ounce of grapefruit juice. Okay. Okay. Go to half ounce of your honey syrup. Okay, flip it over. Okay. Right, and then we're gonna go to an ounce and a half of your favorite bourbon. One of my favorite bourbons is Four Roses single, I mean a small batch and single barrel. I mean Four Roses in general. But ounce and a half of your bourbon. Now, is there something to be said, you know, I've been starting to play around with different cocktails and it always seems like with the balance, it's, um, you know, the, the citrus and the sweet, but it always, equal, that, that always equals the same amount of spirit you need in it. So we did an ounce and a half combined of grapefruit and honey to an ounce and a half of bourbon. Is that true for all recipes? I wouldn't say it's true for all recipes, but I definitely think it is um, very common. Okay. It just really, de it just really depends. Um, but sometimes I like to do um, uh, two to three quarter, three quarter, right? Okay. Especially if it's like, I really want to taste the spirit. Um, it just depends on what the drink is, honestly. Okay. Okay. So ice. Add an ice to my shaker tin. And how much ice is, like just fill it all the way up to the top? No, uh, you, need, you need to give it some room for the ice to move around in your shaker tin. So I would okay. say about, I say that's good. No, yeah, about halfway to that amount, it should be fine. Okay, like halfway to three fourths full with ice. Yes. Okay. And you ready? Yes. Let's shake it up. You have the fancy shake. You have the fancy shake. I just sit here and do this. <laughs> right. So that shaker feels nice and cold. I can hear my cocktail talking to me. Can you hear that? I can hear it. She's like, yeah. I'm ready. You hear it singing to you? That's how you know it's ready when you wake her up. She's <laughs> like, I'm here. Okay, so you have a different strainer than me. So what do I need to do over on this side? Okay, so take your fine strainer, the one that you have sitting on your mat right there, okay, uh -huh. and hold that in your hand. Hold that over your glass, 
okay. then pour straight into that. So I don't have to use the Hawthorne? No, no, use the Hawthorne. Okay, Keep so it just like that. This, yep. And then Perfect. put it through the fine strainer. Precisely. Ooh, that's so pretty. And that beautiful golden brown color, that's what you're looking for. And that's that's what part of what gave this uh, cocktail its name, the Brown Derby. Nice. Good okay, stuff. Can we, can we try it? Of course. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Ooh. That's delicious. And that's so easy. Mm hmm That's a great brunch cocktail too. Like I can Yeah. Yeah. For bourbon. Yeah. This is totally replacing any mimosa. Yeah. I mean yeah. bourbon is like these ingredients, grapefruit, honey, like they very they play with bourbon very, very well. Love. Get those vanilla caramel notes still. It's refreshing. It's mm -hmm. balanced, it's sweet, but it's not too sweet. Right. And that's yeah. what I'm getting. I'm getting the honey on it, but then also like the, it's a nice grapefruit. It's not that super tart grapefruit, but it really does just bring out like, you know, the nice pink grapefruit notes, you know? Definitely. Um, wow, this is, this is delicious. Yeah, it's very good. And this, the recipe, if you do, like I said, an ounce of grapefruit juice to half an ounce of your honey syrup. If you try to go equal parts on this, it's gonna be way too sweet. It's gonna be way too honey for it. And honey is very particular. Yeah. That, honey is very particular, so. Right, and especially with the, you know, normally with a simple syrup, we do one the water, one the sugar. And so we're already a little bit sweeter, the fact that we're doing two parts honey to one part water. So mm -hmm. yeah, less is more on the sweetness to allow the citrus to come out. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, I'm going to sit this because you're going to show us some different variations or should I make Yeah, it I'm going to show a couple, a couple, just two other different variations. Um, um, herbs work very well with this cocktail. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about grapefruit, um, grapefruit works well with mint. Grapefruit works well with rosemary. Um, I have some thyme. I love thyme. I love the very uh the earthiness of time um mm -hmm. and i think it's going to be quite delicious and it's going to just give this cocktail just a little extra uh flavor profile without without covering up or compromising the other ingredients in a cocktail okay. so i'm going to i've got a little time here and i'm going to um just take just take a little sprig not too much okay I picked some from my garden. Before. That's even better. Just a little sprig. I'm gonna give it a little spank, kind of wake it up. I don't even think that I want to muddle this. I feel like shaking it is gonna pull out the um, the essence and the flavor from the time that I'm looking for. Okay. Um, I don't think I need to really muddle this and kind of. I don't think it. I don't think it's that serious. I think that I'm gonna get exactly what I need. Well, um, just a little spank. I smell the, the time already on my hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Question. Time is fantastic. Can I, time, can I reuse my tin or should I dump it? We're at home, honey. Let's reuse this tin. Okay. <laughs> we can reuse it. I would add a little bit of more fresh ice to it, but yeah, we can reuse it. Okay. I'm going to do one more spank to really wake it up. And just throw it into the container, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then that's going to be for this, for this version, that's going to be the only thing that we're doing different. So we're still following the same recipe that we just did. So we're going to start back with our grapefruit juice. Okay. So let me do it this time so I can remember, memorize it. So one okay. grapefruit juice. And then half ounce honey syrup, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay, to one and a half ounce small batch, four roses small batch. Absolutely. All right. Super simple. I, it's drilled in my brain now. It's easy. 
for a little time in there. Yeah. So since we're we're using an herb in here, it's it's um definitely important that we double strain this particular one. So just so everyone that's watching this understands the reason, I'm not trying to be lazy. I'm double straining too, um, but I'm also showing off one of my new bar one of my new bar tools. And I, I, this really cool bartender out of New York, he invented a Hawthorne strainer with a built-in uh, fine strainer in it. So don't think that I'm trying to cut corners. Um, I just got a fancy new tool, so. I'm so excited for you. I want the deets on that so I can be fancy like you. Yes. Okay. You ready? Down? Okay. Take time. Okay. I hear her. That's interesting. I've never listened to my cocktail to see if she was ready. <laughs> yeah, she talks to you. You hear that? She's like... Yeah, she does. Okay, double. Wait, hold on. Double strain. Yes. Hawthorne strain. Yep. yep. And then I'm just going to take a little couple of sprigs of thyme. Okay. My garnish. Uh -oh. And then put that right on top. Did you spank it? Yeah, I gave a little spanking. Okay. All right. So I got some extra here. Mm -hmm. And just let it float. It's so pretty. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Let's see how this one tastes. Oh. Oh, that's God, that's good. good. Yeah. That's I mean, really I'll good. make my boundaries with thyme in it now. It's so good. It just gives it a little bit of earthiness. It's not overpowering. Mm -hmm. It just kind of gives you a nice little, it's playful. Just another little. Yeah. It's the flavor. Yeah, it makes it rustic. It gives it yeah. definitely a little rustic element to it. That's a great, that's a great, um, a great way of putting it. Okay. Can I try one more? Um, I... I'm going to sip. Yeah. Do you want me to try one? I know yeah. we were talking about raspberries earlier. Yes, I know. Um, I'm curious. My friend's birthday is coming up and he loves raspberries. So I was looking for something to, you know, make him for his birthday. Yeah. You're gonna let, me go rinse out, out, let me go rinse out my, um, my shaker tin. Let me get the uh, time out of here. I'll be right back. Okay. So while Toki is rinsing, I'm just going to chat and drink. One at a time. All right, I'm back. Oh, no, that was fast. I was doing a back and forth. I don't know where the time. The time brings out this whole additional flavor. It takes a, like, it's, the first one is very, you know, it's that honey, grapefruit, but I think the time just comes through, right in between the honey and grapefruit. So it's not too sweet, it's not too citrusy, it's a little earthy. It does, yeah. it just adds a different dimension of flavor. Okay, I'm not gonna double fist anymore. Take it away. Jen. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> I'm about to make a third cocktail. So I've never tried this, but in my mind, I think this is gonna be delicious. Okay. So I know that raspberries play very well. Raspberries are very tart and they're juicy and they're really good for you too. And um, I'm so sorry. I need to go get my mother. Okay. Pardon me for one more one more moment. I'm right gonna go back to sipping. Let's we'll start <laughs> with this one. All right. You know, we say we've got nothing but time. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's a cute name. But I'm done. <laughs> Let me go get my uh, Four Roses handy muddler. Muddle up those strawberries and then same recipe, right? So we're going to go with 
an ounce of my cold press grapefruit juice. <laughs> I love grapefruit juice. Me too. Gosh. Especially when I'm hungover, my goodness. <laughs> okay, <laughs> my <laughs> life. <laughs> have to make me choke when i'm hungover kombucha does it for me kombucha kombucha is always a nice re reset yeah really good for you nice detox all right so i have i've muddled four raspberries okay got my one ounce of grapefruit juice half ounce of honey syrup ounce and a half of my Yummy bourbon. Ice. Ice, ice, baby. <laughs> uh oh. All right. Shake it up. So, do you count shakes, or is it really just a feeling that you get when you know it's all ready? I feel it. It's more like, no, I don't count. I feel it. So like when I feel, that's why I love using metal tins, mm -hmm. glass on metal, because I can feel it. I can hear it. Yeah. You're talking to me too. Um, I'm, maybe I do count and I don't, I'm not aware that I count. Maybe that's the okay. best way to put it. Been doing it so long. Yeah. I really thought that this color was gonna be uber pink. But it's very pink though. It's pinker than the other ones. Cause mine are more golden. It smells good. Yeah. Let's see if this is a... Uh... I think you just made something. That's delicious. Is it? Oh yeah. Okay. I'm running and out. That's very subtle. Okay. I think you should try that. I think you should try that. Okay. Four raspberries. The in the traditional brown derby recipe, one ounce of grapefruit, half an ounce of honey syrup, and one and a half ounces of four roses small batch. Absolutely. Shaken up and and strained. Double strained. Double strained. Just to get the pulp out. Uh huh. That's the whole point of double, double straining is just so you can remove, you know, your eye charge and your pulp. Um, I like to drink drinks. I don't like to eat drinks. Mm -hmm. You know, some, you might go to some bars and they'll, you know, like your mojito, they shake it and just dump like the pulp and everything. I don't, I don't like that. Right. Right. Some people might like that. I don't like that. Sorry. All right. Well, thank you so much for teaching us how to make a brown derby three different ways so we've got our classic our thyme and now our raspberry that you have um this has been amazing so very easy cocktail that you can you know see what you got in your fridge and kind of play with the flavor profile and it's i call i think it's a quarantine cutie cocktail you know it's <laughs> love it yeah. Well, thank you so much. And this is another episode of our cocktail masterclass with Toki Sears. We'll see you next week. See Cheers you next week. Guys.